Okay, Father, we we just we just bless you, Lord, as we come together. Thank you for the time of fellowship and sharing. It's so good to do that, Lord. Thank you that we can do that. So together we just acknowledge that we are one. And we come to you, Lord, and we say we want to meet with you tonight. We come with anticipation. We come with hope. And we come with excitement because you always have something good for us. And it is your great pleasure to reveal yourself to us and reveal your mysteries to us. So Father, right now we all join hands and we step into your presence on the count of three. One, two, three. I saw a step, step into a portal that was like on the floor and it had rings of color, like rainbow, tie-dye rainbow color that we have stepped into. Did the portal go down or we just walked through it into the rainbow? Um, it was on the floor, so it's just like I step, stepped into it. Okay. It's the only way I can explain it. So I saw us like come together. Um, normally, like we'd step through and like a door is kind of like how I visualize it. And this time it was everyone in a circle stepped in, into the center of the circle, which was the light and was Jesus. It turned into a shaft of light and it was like a blue a white light um, it started out kind of golden and I felt like we all shot upward very fast um, like it was almost like um, like it being in a rocket ship being shot to the moon or something it was like a straight up portal type thing I was very aware of a blue light as well with a lot of space around like I didn't feel like we stepped into something enclosed. I felt like we stepped in off a big open space. I was aware that there was space all around us. Well, when we stepped into the circle. I, I saw us learning steps and it was like we were learning to do some kind of a dance. That's great. <laughs> it was quite fun. I can actually see that. I was going to ask, um, Jessica, you, you felt like we were shot straight up. Did you? I did. Did you see anything? I saw Avril beside me. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> like we were going so fast, we're like, Whoa! <laughs> I heard you laughing, Jessica. I heard you laugh. Um, it hasn't, it, we haven't, uh, we ended anywhere. I just, I, I kind of, I was just, um, yeah, I felt like it was like straight up. You know, sometimes we go through like a tube. Sometimes it's, you know, there's been all these different ways, but this was like a, yeah, straight up. And it was, um, I, 
like if we were the reason why I said kind of like a rocket it was like if you were in close quarters with someone going at a high speed you both would kind of be jiggling and looking at each other almost like centrifugal force that's what was happening with me and Avril we were looking at each other and going oh so I don't know what that where that's going or what but it was uh yeah. I see us in space and I could see all these stars. I'm not, you know, exactly where. And then I saw um, kind of like some kind of building with lots of glass, kind of like what the uh, con air airport controllers would be in, you know, as they're keeping track of all the traffic going on in the air, except for this is like in space and I see these different looking like spaceship and people all kind of coming from two different directions, coming closer to each other, almost as if they're there for a meeting or, or for some purpose. Wow. Will you say that again? So we're in a, this this room is all glass and it's kind of like a air, uh, airport control, you know? And there's, I don't know, it kind of looks like computers or something, you know, if you look down. And, but looking out, you can see these different spaceships or, you know, flying things and there's people like flying in some in space suits some in not and they're coming from two different directions and they're coming like together like towards each other but they're not passing each other they're just coming towards each other as if they were like meeting so they're meeting in the air <laughs> meaning in yeah. space yeah yeah okay in space and they're all like yeah and we're yeah. in the observation deck yeah are we just observing or are we actually we're, doing anything I, I think we're just observing I, I don't know where the rest of you guys are I know I'm sitting in this I think you guys are with me I since I lose people all the time <laughs> <laughs> it's because we fade in and out you know <laughs> So I saw something when we first went in. I looked down at our feet and um, there were lines. They were geometric lines. They were very mathematical. And um, then they were portioned off. So I thought I would look up geometric. And then uh, I sent Jill the, where I looked, I sent it on Messenger. Oh, okay. And, I missed that. And then when, and then when I looked, and that was the Hebrew of it, uh, tells you the words or whatever. And it's a use over time geometric. So that's what it was like. It was like almost looking at, say, a map. A person that is surveying something would look at a map. But this is, you know, in the, in the heavens. And then as time went on and I turned off my phone and fixed him to say this or whatever, I heard that they were like our assignments these geometric patterns that I see below my feet. And that's it. I'm just sensing that the, like the, the tower with all the glass and that we could see, and then what Linda was saying, the geometric configurations everything i just get the sense that we're we're peering into the mind of christ we're, we're being able to see um you know his plans see his thoughts to see what he's thinking about what he's meditating on and what he's focusing on and um it's like that 
you know, a thing where we like stepped into the matrix, you know, as I talked about before, but everything you just said oh. just sounds so similar to that. Oh. And, um, you know, it's, you know, we have this picture, we think of the mind of Christ and we picture our mind and we picture God's mind being like putting, put into our mind, but it's different than that. We actually engage and step into his mind like it is a matrix like it is that tower all of a sudden that we can see out and see things that we couldn't see before it 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 really opens up the prophetic uh the prophetic realm because all of a sudden you're you're um you're synchronized with him you have that um that Robert, vibration that since yeah yeah have you ever have you ever ha actually had him step into your mind? It's trippy. It, like it, he expands it because his mind is so much bigger. It's weird. Yes, I, yes, I have had that. I have had that. And um, but but in this situation, what I've just seen lately is where we are stepping inside of his mind. And yeah. in this situation, it's that same mentality yeah. that. We are in Christ. We are in him. We are in, you know, yes. that we have, we move and have our being in him. And, and this whole thing is like that, that geometrical matrix. It's like, like we're learning to, to synchronize and step into that, to his thoughts. And, you know, we, we talk about so many times we say um, that we, feel his heart or we have experienced his heart you know but in the scriptures so many times he talks about that he has given us his mind he has given us his mind and there is something that that's huge about us focusing on what is in his mind and and what i find a lot of times for me is when i focus on that i start to see things like i was in a parking lot the other day and i saw all the cars and i saw all the people as i was sitting in my car and all of a sudden, I could just see every car, everything that I was seeing was totally orchestrated and originated from the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. And and I was like, oh, wow. You know, it's wow. like all of a sudden I saw the connection. I saw the thing. And it was like all of a sudden I realized he was intimately involved with everything that was going on. You know, um, this reality where we, we almost promote that, you know, all this evil in the world, all this evil in the world and the reality it's been like a shift where it's like this really is my father's world not the enemies you know and and i'm seeing that and it's bringing a lot more comfort and there's a lot more of his reality of of who he is it, it's it's becoming stronger and stronger every day as the as he's meditating through me and that he's increasing his thoughts and his mind you know and i don't know it's just what i what i was sensing when you were doing it when you guys were talking about that plus also when we first stepped in i felt like i was kind of getting ready to go in and then when she said we were stepping in i felt like i got caught up in a vortex so i can and i was just like, like, uh, as Jessica was saying, we were like shot, but it was like, I felt like I was in a vacuum and I just got sucked into this reality of what God was doing. And immediately I saw the El Shaddai and then I was sitting at a table and, uh, there was like food before me. And then I heard Psalms 23 and it said, you know, that, um, he prepares the table for us in the presence of our enemies and I, I became aware that I felt like I had been under attack at that moment you know just even before we were there and I could feel that that God was like shifting the whole atmosphere and he was saying you know it was like he was saying I'm here with you and the reason I can put the presence or this this table in the presence of your enemies is that they dare not touch you because because of the awareness of of who you are and who I am in you you know and I just I don't know I just started to sense all that and I just sensed such like a like a mother protecting me like a father protecting me I felt that 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 intimacy and strength all of a sudden and uh, totally felt like I was being guarded and loved and restored at that moment 
Amen. So I just want to mention, um, since Karen had seen this this place, the only other time that I've been in a place like this with a group was with Polly's group. I like ascended with her group twice on a Wednesday. Um, and it was at the time that they were being taken to a place that Nancy and Mike had been talking about. And I, I, I've been asking the Lord this whole time and I just couldn't remember it, but it was like a it's almost like a place beyond, um, it was a place of creation, it was a place of, um, but this is, this is the place that I ascended to when the, in that ascension, it was uh, becoming the queen. Um, it wasn't being, it wasn't about the wife role. It was about, it was, it was about being, it was the queen role. And that was where I got dressed in my dress and I saw myself from a distance being dressed in the full nine like a queen ascending up the stairs and taking my seat in this command center. And um, we all lined up and at the beginning of it, um, someone had said they saw just like, uh, I think it was Polly even where she said that people were attending to us like as this queens, is, like we had our... Huh? So I was like, oh my God, because I'm just about out. Carry on, Jess. I don't think. Um, oh, okay. Oh, um, so I. it makes me wonder. Um, I've just been asking the Lord because the, the way that Karen described it in the scene and everything was identical. And, and I don't know, um, that was that's my reference point for when I step out of my seat of rest. That's my visual. What I just shared with you guys of going back up into my seat as the queen, the partner, the equal um, with Jesus in the place of um, overseeing, like in his mind, like what he has to tend to his duties, you know, like things he's got to take care of. Um, so it's just fascinating to me the way Robert, what, what he just shared and just, um, what Karen shared and what I've experienced before, just kind of putting all of those things together. And I wasn't sure if I was supposed to share that or not um, until what Robert said. And then I went, oh, okay, maybe there's something in this um, because so far it's still speaking that to me that this is, this was my first revelation of being a queen to a king. And wow. so um, in this command center place and space, like Star Trek kind of thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it it's very queen similar queen of the universe queen <laughs> but and i i haven't um, necessarily seen that here but it that's but my first first as soon as she said that that was the first thing that came to me so um i don't know maybe i'll fit in somewhere welcome bucky Glad you made it. Glad you could make it tonight. Hey, hey everybody. Yeah. Hi, Bucky. I'll, I'll be here for a little while at least. Okay. Hey, brother. I got something. It's outside of the box. Um, and I got ground control to Major Tom. <laughs> And I've been trying to look it up, and it's ground control to Major Tom, ground control to Major Tom. I think it's a decode. Um, take your protein pills and put your helmet on. 10, ground control, 9 to Major Tom, 8, 7, 6, commencing 5, countdown engines on 4, 3, 2, 1, check ignition 1, and may God's love lift off be with you. And then this is ground control to Major Tom. Um, you've really made the grade and the papers want to know whose shirt you wear. Now it's time to leave the capsule if you dare. This is Major Tom to ground control. I'm stepping through the door and I'm floating in a most peculiar way and the stars look very different today. 
for oh. here I am. For here I am. I am sitting in my tin can. Far above the world, planet's earth is blue and there is nothing I can do. So how do we decode that? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's really cool. Maybe it's yes, an I English remember baby. that song maybe. very well. Yeah, well, maybe. I, I just came. I mean, I've never, I haven't thought of it for donkeys years, and it just came whoom straight in. <laughs> Down control to Major Tom. I think I can't say that. <laughs> and then, it, I, as I read it, I felt it was a decode for something. Yes, I'm glad. But when you um, say the words, which I know very well, what struck me was, um, "It's time to leave the capsule if you dare." And I yeah. thought maybe that's an invitation for us. To sort of step out into space where Karen saw those other people. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anyone the same. That's the words that stuck out at me. Well, that was kind of what stuck to me as well. It's like, you know, God's love will lift us up. We've made the grade and yeah. it's the papers want to know whose shirt you wear. Well, you know, we're light beings in an earth suit, so... Uh, it's time to leave the capsule if you dare. This is Major Tom to ground control. I'm stepping through the door. And the door is Yeshua, isn't it? Yeah. And I'm floating in a most peculiar way. And the stars look very different today. So, and we're the stars as well. So, we're going to put on space suits or just... Mm -mm. No. Just be because we want to go. Space Our light bodies. We have our light bodies. We don't need spacesuits. <laughs> we can take off our capsule, which is the Earth suit. Yeah, that's what I was contemplating mm -hmm. there. Yeah, that's something to do. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, I see you guys now. You're all colorful. Yeah, it's leaving the Earth suit because it's all, it's all about sound frequency. And uh, yeah, vibration. Well, Monica, would you like to lead us out of the out of our control tower into the space? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, okay, Father, we're trusting in you, and we're in you, and we have nothing to fear. So, um, three, two, it, it, it's, it's a countdown, isn't it? It's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven count commencing. Five countdown engines on. <laughs> so we um we thank you that we're empowered by you father and four three two check ignition one we're one in you yeshua and god's love lift off so there we go that was perfect <laughs> we <laughs> So thank you, Father, that we are above all earth. We're above all things. We are seated in heavenly places with you. And you are everywhere. So we thank you for this great cosmos that you created. Wow. I get the sense that I left the comfort of ground control. And then when I, when we stepped in, I got the sense that I found my security in him. I found my security. I found my comfort in him. Um, I felt like I just flew into his arms and I found a deeper security in him other than the ground control that, that I was trying to connect with. And I actually felt freedom. It was like um, just a free floating with everyone in spirit and having access to go wherever. And when I thought that, I started to like zoom away from you guys. And then I went, wait, I want to join them. And it was like, zip, right back to where I wanted to be within a second. <laughs> it was like a lot of freedom to um, move, move at thought, move with my thoughts. Yeah. <laughs>
And um, I, you know, I can resonate with definitely with what uh, you guys have shared so far. And um, also for me, what what came to mind was um, this is another place for us to um, you know to enjoy to um, just like we you know we walk anywhere on earth I mean the, the cosmos is the same thing it's the same for us it can be the same for us we don't think about it <laughs> as often as walking out our front door but I felt like the, uh, something along those lines was uh, being uh, imparted, if not to everybody, to me for sure. Bring it into your everyday life, your everyday thinking. Often when, when I send on my own, I, I come to this place. I find myself in the cosmos just like floating around. And then I'm on this funny little, like a Cirque du Soleil machine. <laughs> you know, those funny things they design for Cirque du Soleil. You know, like, um, it's like I'm riding a bicycle, but the bicycle is suspended by like an air balloon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'm sort of... <laughs> And I'm just cruising through the cosmos, pedaling this air balloon bicycle. And that's all I am now. <laughs> that's so cute. And I I'm just sort of going funny. and I'm just pedaling and looking around. And I feel quite at home and quite comfortable and like not so great. <laughs> so that's where I am. I can totally see that with you. Yeah. <laughs> So cute. I really resonated with what you said, Jill. I I loved it. I, I wanted to resonate with it because it was like um oh possibilities are endless. You know, yes. all things are possible. It was that step out of your front porch into space. It, like um expand your thinking and and tied with I also sensed when Robert said something about leaving ground control it was like um, getting out of the earth's atmosphere of fear and just things that have been happening it's like um, I'm not saying an escape but it's um, it's a it's releasing a lot of those earthly frequencies out here yeah which may have tied into my freedom that I felt like take off that earth suit and just fly free. Like it's, you know, from sicknesses and just a lot of stuff, you know, that we've all been entangled with. And unfortunately, sometimes you don't have a choice, you know, yeah. jobs and families and things like that. So um, it's all kind of tying together kind of in a theme for me personally. It's really powerful. All things are possible with him. Amen. Yes. The yes. word, thank you, Father. The, the name of the song "Ground Control" is, is very apt, as you were saying. So I think that I, I feel that too—the release of the control, just to like change of atmosphere, just get out of the, as you're saying, the frequency of the control from from being on the earth. Wow, that's even more powerful. control and I like that sort of ties into what Robert said you know coming to Christ's mind coming to his perspective coming to his view like a release as you said I think you used the word release like a release from from the pressure just the pressure of, of being on the earth at this stage yeah it was so interesting when monica started to um bring us into it it was so strange because i went from being in the in the um what was it called like the um 
that platform that we were in what do we call it whatever the the tower and I was all of a sudden out in space it was very black I could see little white dots um but I could see us all standing on the edge as if it was a we were all going to skydive it like it like all of a sudden the ground control place was like a plane but it wasn't it was just a, we were standing at a doorway I was about to watch everybody jump into in their spirit uh body into the cosmos and it was a very black and white and it, you know I was I was seeing it from that perspective all of a sudden um taking the leap <laughs> and, and when we did we all floated in like a circle and I was asking the Lord what color everybody's spirit was <laughs> and then all of a sudden I started getting sucked away and I was like what where am I going I want to go back and it was like whoop, right back where everybody was just kind of suspended and I was like wow this is cool so that's cool So, Father, is there anything um, in this place that we're in um, that you want us to see in particular? So we ask for eyes to see and ears to hear what your spirit is saying to us. I did see his hands um, reach out. And in the midst of these two hands, it was almost as if a ball was enveloping and it reminded me of something it hit my spirit, something earlier I was looking at. Um, in the imagination, allowing a space or creating a space for pure consciousness and imagination um, and to create the space. And in his hands, it was almost as if I was seeing that 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 space that space that i was making for just pure consciousness the christ-like mind in the imagination not any other thought not any other agenda just pure consciousness with the christ-like mind and and it began to roll into a heart as he was bouncing it up you could see the the ball turn into a heart which is love and it would come back down in a ball and he'd lift it back up and it'd come back down in a ball and i'm like lord this is you know this is off of what everybody else is thinking but in essence, it is about the intimacy of Christ. And, and, and it, what I felt in my spirit is, do you trust me even in this place of not knowing, just in the pure consciousness to have the Christ-like mind? That's good. Because I, what I sensed was a lot of rest, a waiting, and vastness. Again, because it yes. was so black. Yeah, It was me so too. black. Yeah. Mm. That's what color the ball in the heart was that he was bouncing in his white hands that were like was black. And it's, it is the vast. Mandy, did you say it was? It was black. Yeah, um, I tend to, when I see vastness or um, the void or something like that, I see dark because God is in dark as well as in light. And so just in representation, when I was doing it earlier, I seen dark, but as I seen him with it, it was black. It was what he was bouncing was black and it was a bowl. Oh. And as the ball was in his hands, his hands were light, um, not just like a regular white light, but like a pure light. Um, and they would toss the ball up. And as the ball would lift up off his hands, it would turn into a heart. And as it landed back in his hands, it was the ball. It was when he lifted it out of his hands, it was the heart, the love. But as it landed back in his hands, it was like the consciousness, the void. All things are possible. Um, anyway, but it was just from an area that I had experienced earlier when I was trying to meditate on the Lord and I was given that space. That's what that ball. Isn't amazing if it's just like that?
Okay, so what if, what if Yeshua is the spaceship or the capsule we're in? I think I I thought we stepped out of that. But yeah, but I, we're always we're always in Yeshua. Yes, I know. But when you yeah. said, I mean, so I I see I saw I thought we had stepped out of that quote unquote capsule, which was our spacesuit. But you were, I mean, which was our Earth suit. We, we were talking that it was, but you're yeah. seeing it as Yeshua as well? Yeah. Okay. We're in him, but not, not in an earth suit because yeah. yes, we, we often think of Yeshua as still being in an earth suit, but he's not in an earth suit. He, since he's, he's a light, you know, he is the light of the world. He is the light in the darkness. He is... Um, He's of a totally different essence that we knew him on Earth as. And I'm hearing the word expansion. Somebody was talking of consciousness earlier. Um, I think, I think the expansion. I'm kind of seeing light being pushed out, like it's very, you know, like um, like it's very, very fluid, and it's the expansion of that consciousness. Do you see it being like? Uh pushed in this realm we're in or is it it's like we're in this and we're part of it and and it's like we're expanding we're expanding um in him in in his consciousness i, I can't really describe it any more than that yeah. it's like being in in the light or being part of the light yeah. and and I can see these hands pushing it, pushing it out in, you know, in different directions. It's so funny Father, what you're seeing. Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Bucky, because, um, yeah, I don't uh, want to put words Robert? to it. I want to, see what, I want to see what the Father shows other people. Okay, what, what I was seeing was... Um, I, I saw that we had uh, stepped out of the the suits and that we were like there in this atmosphere, in this matrix, in this space, and we were floating. And um, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, I think we're supposed to experience something here, God. And all of a sudden, I saw like as we were like taking off the suits, I felt like that the best way I could say it was like my skin was coming off, like my um, my humanness was coming off or whatever, you know, for a moment. And all of a sudden I saw light. And, mm -hmm. and, and it was like, okay, what am I experiencing? And I heard God say, this is the transfiguration. You're, you're becoming who you are. You're becoming the being of light, you know, and you get talking about there was like we were experiencing light we were in the light but we were like becoming the light you know and and that's what I saw I saw that transfiguration and God gave me the scripture Romans 12 2 where it says do not be conformed to this world which that is where we were losing the um the earthly control you know or or control whatever it was earth control um but being transformed by the renewing of our mind. And what I saw was, and I think it was, I'm not sure who said it earlier. It might've been Karen. I'm not sure. Um, when she asked me if I had allowed God's mind to touch my mind. And I thought, I said, you know, I think there's something about that. So as we were um, 
there I could sense we were in his mind, but then I felt like God said, allow your mind to touch my mind. And when it did, I felt like there really was that renewing of my mind. And then God brought that scripture and said that, you know, you're being transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I've heard a lot of people saying that the actual translation in the Hebrew and Greek is better instead of the word being transformed, it's actually better translated that it says that um, that we are transfigured by the renewing of our mind. And, um, and that means that we're being not just our, you know, that we're just changed into something else. That we're actually becoming a being of light. We are, you know, just like the mountain of transfiguration. And um, I, I just saw us kind of expanding becoming that we were losing that that uh i guess that identity of just that earthly control and we were starting to see ourselves as he saw us and um i I just saw our mind being touched and being renewed and and we were stepping into this vastness of his mind this huge huge place of his mind if that makes any sense yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Not to toot Buc- Bucky's horn, but he says this a lot, and it just reminded me, um, like I heard his voice in my head say, remember, you know, when we do this, we think it, it, it's really happening. You know, it's it's really actually doing something when we ascend when we're in these atmospheres when we're in these realms and in these dimensions that it it really is doing something whether you recognize it whether you feel it you know some people may feel vibrations some people may but some people may not feel anything but we believe by faith right that's how everything is happening and so um i just i was reminded of that and i just wanted to share that with everyone that it's you know my growth in this group, particularly in ascending, because this is the first time I've done that with you guys. And um, so much I didn't realize at the time, I just believe by faith, we're, we're in these places, we're doing it. And there came a time, maybe two months after that, I doubted a little bit, is this even doing anything? And then Lord would send confirmation to reassure me. And, and then I heard Justin uh, Abraham talk about it too, that every time we ascend, we're being we're being transformed. We're we're uh, we're receiving more light. We're we're we, we're in atmospheres that are downloading us into more place. So it is really I really believe it with all my heart, and I just wanted to really remind you guys of that. That even if you don't feel it, being in this place, like the Father brought us here today, take off your earth suit, jump out into this vast place in me. Whether you're actually experiencing anything physical in your body or not there's something transpiring in you and, Mm -hmm. and it's growing you and it's changing you and you'll come back differently than we were before we started. And we can really believe that um, to see the manifestation of that. Right. I got a little bit more information on the stretching business. Um, It was likened to a piece of dough you know, like when you're bread making and you're stretching it. So it was like we were part of it, we were in it, and we were being stretched. And I sense it's something to do with imagination as well. Uh, Earlier on, you mentioned expand. You heard the word expand. So I think that relates to it. God's expanding us. Yeah, and I'm reminded that what Yeshua said as well, I am the bread of life. So, um, yeah. But it feels at the moment, you know, that um, after this kind of little bit of stretching and expanding, it's then if you, you, it, you know, it, it's just like the dough, you know, it, it, you put it all back and you leave it rest for a while. <laughs> It's kind of weird. (laughs) I just keep going back to what Mandy said, or what she saw with with the hands and the ball. And and I just, for me, 
um, I sort of pictured it as if God is just molding, you know, it's his hands and he's just molding <laughs> and shaping and he would throw it up. And that sort of relates to like pizza dough as well. You know how you throw it yeah. up and form it and everything. And, but it's all done with love. And that's why you kept seeing she saw a heart. And that, yeah. that those images are staying with me. That God sees, he's working with us in this mm. space. And it's kind of interesting because when you release one thing, some another little bit comes to you. So I then saw a lump of clay. And it's it, like it was thrown up in the air. And um, it's like we've got no control because he's in control. And he's the potter and we're the clay. Yeah. <laughs> and we are the work of his hands. So I think um, having come out, you know, I think what we've done tonight is much, much bigger than what we, um, we can take in at the minute. So, Father, help us. <laughs> help us to see what you see. And we really just declare and decree. The... We declare and we decree and decree that um, we trust in you. And we lean not on our own inner standing, but we trust you. Okay, sir, um, carry on. I was just going to say, um, when Mandy was releasing that, what I was hearing, because we had just said about this vastness, um, I really, just even from earlier, a group um, that I'm in, we were talking, and, and it was like, just when you think you understand the Lord, he breaks your box and, and your theology and and he does it so much that you finally go, okay, like I, it's not that I don't, I don't know you at all. It's that I'm open for whatever, <laughs> because we, we finally have, he's broken our boxes so many times that we finally understand his vastness. And so we come to flow with that vastness and trust him more in it. And I feel like this is kind of a lot of that same um, understanding. We talked about the mind of Christ as well. So, but um what I was seeing when, when Mandy was talking about um, the ball and then he'd throw it up and it would become a heart. And when it came back down to me, that was like that. Um, to me, it was just for personally speaking about uh, creating because I felt like the spaces that from the void is where all things are, you know, created. And it was like he, he was just saying that I create everything out of love, you know, and, and as an example to us that, um, you know, we're in, we're held in, in the palm of his hand, right? Our names are written in the palm of his hand and it could represent us, but it could also represent that as I uh, create with him, it, it's in love, that, that that's how everything um, that he created was out of love. Um, and what did he say? What was in that song, Monica? It's like, um, blast off in god's love is that what it said or something like that um, may god's love be with you ah oh, see yeah isn't that interesting well i just went pulled up to a the black almost like the black vastness but it was like almost like karen said dark with stars everywhere and to the edge is what it seemed like it looked like i came to the edge and I'm standing and there's this big opening and it's kind of like an archway and a, a, a like a flat bottom. And I'm standing in the vastness at this archway looking out. But really, in essence, I'm looking in and I'm like, where am I on the outer limits of the vastness? Like, where am I at? He said, but look through my eyes. It reminds me of what Bud Lightyear says, to infinity and beyond. <laughs> I just I keep coming back to the, to the black ball in his hands. And 
to, to me that ball, because we were so aware of the blackness and the vastness in the cosmos, he's like got the whole cosmos in his hands and he's playing with it. And he's, I, I feel like he's showing us. Yeah. Like he's showing us, this is what we can do. Look, this is what I can do. Look, learn from me. That's what I'm feeling. But I'm not sure exactly what, what he's teaching us. I got that feeling too, Avril. I mean, all this stuff that we've talked about, I think it, I think, you know, I resonate with all of it. There, there are many pieces to this. And um, what you were talking about is just one more. But this, this surely is an expansion of the mind of Christ in us. Well, that would be um, agreement. Well, because when I was, um, when he was doing the bowl, right before he did the bowl, he said something to me. Um, I'm in all things. I'm in all things. I'm of all things and created all things. And so I'm sitting there like, in all things, of all things, and created all things. Okay, Lord. And then it wasn't too long after that that he showed me the hands with the balls. And I was like, okay, I'm going to say something because I don't want to miss my mark just because I'm not understanding and sharing. You know, I don't want to miss what I'm what I'm supposed to bring. But and anyway, with that and then to go to his eyes. But we know we're talking about learning of them. That's when it really highlighted to me. There's so much more to what I really even think I begin to know that I could stand a few lessons with them. <laughs> I don't ever think I'll be able to understand or be taught of him unless he teaches me himself about himself. Actually, that's more important than learning a bunch of stuff. Yeah. It's really about him yes. and who he is. Because as we know who he is, we can become that. But I really think we already are. We just don't know. Yeah, we are. Yeah. I mean, we're becoming more and more aware of that. Now, I agree with that. I love... Uh, one of my favorite teachers is a man named Malcolm Smith He, uh, with Unconditional Love Ministries. And um, he talks about in the Bible, he said, you know, in the Bible, it, it doesn't say bring this new love to them or, or you know, do this new thing. It, it basically, he, he uses the scriptures and he says, open my eyes so I may be able to see open my eyes so I may be able to see even the love you know he talks about uh, have the ability to see the height the depth the width the breadth of the love of God and that uh, that I may know know this love that I would come to know it uh, um, even says you know it's not like I need this new experience of love it's like let your love abound you know and he's like saying it's not like trying to experience something that's new. It's saying, God, open my eyes so I might be able to see who you really are in these situations. Help me be able to, you know, to see. And and for some reason, I, f I feel like even for me right now that I'm being expanded to be able to see his mind, um, that my mind is coming in contact with his mind but it's expanding my mind to be able to see his mind. Like I need help to, to be able to see his mind. And I, I feel like that's some of the things that are being said here, but uh, you know, I, I just feel like we're almost even praying that prayer, you know, in this whole experience and saying, God help us to see, help us open our eyes. You know, I heard somebody else saying, you know, see through my eyes or let me see through your eyes, you know, whichever it was said, but that same reality, let me see who you are. Let me behold what you've done in me. Let me behold who you are in these situations and where we are now uh, in, in this world. Let me behold who you are. 
So I, I don't know. It's just kind of resonating in me right now. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, Bucky, are you, are you getting anything on this? Or are you um, just curious? I'm, I'm kind of uh, otherwise uh, spoken for at the moment. Gotcha. And uh, we haven't heard from you. How are you doing? I'm observing and listening, and while I was observing, I, I did uh, go to sleep. Oh, and this is very unusual. But um, so I feel like he was expanding me, but he yeah. was doing it while I was sleeping. So it's all very, 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 very wonderful. Um, yeah, what he's doing here. It's uh, and I find such rest in it to know that he can do all that he does, and put us at rest and at ease. When that's opposite of the way it is, you know, in the natural. Yes. Just awesome. Thank you, Father. I often have to get put to sleep for God to do his work because my mind's too active and interferes too much. Exactly. Yeah. Same and, here. You know, yeah. <laughs> Your it's subconscious is never sleep. Your subconscious is always working and going and receiving. So, um, yeah, I used to sort of get so frustrated when I'd go to sleep, but no, I don't. Now I understand it's like, yeah, God always does something when I sleep. So where's everybody now? What do you sort of, where do you see yourself? Well, I, I see myself, um, you know, again, in the cosmos, um, I, see, I see the hands of the Father. I see them as, as light, you know, light hands. And I see all of us just, um, uh, kind of just moving around in this in this vast area um, and it's almost as if we are absorbing his thoughts you know the things that he's wanting to um, wanting us to see it's as if he's not not even speaking them but um, more like he's thinking them, and I feel like we are all picking it up in this air, in this place that we're in, in this vastness, and that's why we're, you know, we're we're we've been sharing a lot of the things that he's saying to us. I thought it was interesting that it was crown control to Major Tom, and I thought, well, Tom is Thomas. What did Thomas do? He was a doubter, right? And what did um, somebody else said? I think it was Mandy. Is we do you trust me? You know to step out into this place. You know, so it was interesting. I picked yeah. up on that earlier. We hadn't really discussed it, but I just wanted to point that out. That it was like as you're saying that, it was like look at the progression of events. You know, we start out in a earthly atmosphere thought process where we're safe, but it it turned into I want to take you deeper. Do you trust me? And step out into this unknown vastness where we weren't given much. And our natural reality, our natural response is take us somewhere, do something, show us something, teach us. And a lot of us weren't just okay with just being, right? It's kind of been this, it's almost like the waiting on him. 
where you have to just resolve to be okay with don't pray in tongues, don't worship, don't, you know, it's that like when I did a lot of the contemplative prayer, which I'm trying to get back to, it's like, I just sit to be with him. It's yeah. not to go anywhere. It's not to learn anything. It's not because I need something from him. It's just to be with him. And it's like, almost like he's invited us into his mind to understand the vastness, but to have stillness, like his mind is at rest in this place yes. like we're in this vastness a complete rest that you know which seems crazy because we started out talking about how his mind is like this matrix right there's all <laughs> this stuff that's going on and all this stuff he's doing but he, i feel like that is an impartation that in the midst of right how busy our minds can be we can truly access his mind which is a place of rest and be okay with it, like come to learn what it feels like in his mind with so much to do with, I'm sure he doesn't feel pressure of all that has to be done, uh -uh. but he does it all, all at the same time. That's a huge revelation for the, you know, for us to learn. So yeah, I think there's definitely a lot that's being downloaded, but most of it is the atmosphere. Well, I'm sensing I'm watching this light show going on, but it's it's the um, it's the father watching it, and yes, I'm part of the light show, and I can see like we're moving through this vast space, like floating, and uh, but we're all within his sight, and yet we're in him watching ourselves doing this. It's kind of. <laughs> um, You're getting multi-dimensional views. <laughs> yeah, if that yeah. makes any, if that makes any sense, but uh, and it's like um, yeah, if we're being observed. So as she as she was talking about how we're in him and looking at it in unity with his eyes, but also in his eyes, looking back at ourselves. Um, I can resonate with that. And even with the point of the Lord had been, and this was, he just took me back to what I seen yesterday with our natural eyes. We drive down the road and we look into the clouds at sunset and we see the horizon or the setting of the sun and we see the clouds and we see the blue sky and we see how it, it's shifting. But as I was on my way home, looking through my natural eyes, but in the reflection of looking through the lenses of Christ, I could see the reflection of the waters. So I see how the earth's waters and the land masses are reflected even into the sky, how the positioning of the clouds in the sky to where the sun was setting. It was a, a flop representation, if it made any sense. And, and the Lord was talking to me about walking upon the water. The waves can't wash us. The storms, the winds, the waters, they can't sweep us. We all know we have waves coming. It's been wave after wave of different things in different people's lives, but they shall not wash over us. And as I was looking at that through the flip side of looking through his eyes, he was speaking to me, walk upon the waters. Don't allow. And we have that in him. If, if we truly trust, even in the flip side of it, if we can walk through the waters of the atmosphere that's around us, that I've seen with his eyes driving down the hallway, it was the first time I'd ever seen that. Then I can walk through and navigate even this storm and the winds in the natural because Jesus literally could navigate the waters above and walk on physical water. And if we're like him and he says, greater things we shall do, then we're to follow the, the process that he followed, if that makes any sense. But it is a, a flip sided, almost like if I'm in a mirror image or, or, or made in the image of Christ and I look into the mirror and I see myself, but I'm in, in a mirror of image of Christ then I seen that flip side of looking through his eyes in the water, if that makes any sense. And it was the sky. Yeah, that's really good, Mandy. 
and it was the atmosphere. And where did they say most of the principalities, most of the things go? Where, where, how do they attack through our thoughts and minds and different things? But we are not to be swept by that. We're to walk upon that. And Jesus looking through the lenses of him, even with my natural eyes positioning in. And that's why I really resonated with what Robert's been doing and how this has all panned out. Because I would have never seen the sky, even at the horizon, the event horizon, as a as waters it was it was really weird it was a flip mirror image and yeah, but it was yeah, awesome. yeah yeah that's good and so when she, monica said the, to flip up i just literally did that and then he put that in my spirit because even yesterday physically he did it Right, I'm seeing this now as everything is slowing down. The light show is over and we're coming back into oneness. And he's like, he's calling us back to himself. And uh, he's encouraging us. It was an exercise, we were on an exercise. Basically, really, we were changing. It's now showing me that we were changing the frequency of the of the um, cosmos um, by having left the Earth suit and being the light beings that we've been created in His image to be. Are you getting any more on? Uh you know, the black ball, Avril? Mm, yes, I am. Um, I felt like, well, I keep hearing God laugh, which I haven't heard before. And he's like, he's, he's having a good chuckle at us. <laughs> and he's like, but he's also, but it's not, it's, it's not a laughing at, it's just a delighting in us. Mm. Mm. Um, and he's like really enjoying us watching him. And for me, I've been sensing that this is the very beginning of creation that we're actually watching. That he's, he's just playing with the blackness because since Mandy said that I, I can't get that out of my mind I'm just seeing that all, all the time <laughs> and and I'm sensing that I'm watching him start with creation he's just got the void he's just got the blackness but he's doing it all in love and at one part I felt him I was watching him and that's when I heard him like delighting in me and then he said, well, do you want to come inside? So I jumped inside the black ball. And then I became part of it. And then I think um, Monica or someone was saying about how we in him and we out him at the same time. And then I was getting inside out. I was getting the words inside out. And it's just this whole dimension of we observing, but we in, but we mm -hmm. are, but we above but we inside. So it's just this multi, multi dimensional space we in. Yeah. Yes. So April, as you're telling that, I started, uh, I was led to uh, Genesis one and it says in, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Just yes, me of what then he said, let there be light. So we were like light beings <laughs> moving yeah, in and out and through it. Yes, you saw the light show, and when you saw that, that's when I thought, okay, maybe I am, that's when it sort of confirmed what I was seeing. And we were, we were all there when the morning stars sang. 
<laughs> yeah, we were all there before creation. We yes. were in God. I see us partnering with God in this, like he's saying, you know, this is what I do in my mind, you know, and he's like, I create, I, you know, and I want you to join in with me, yeah. you know, and I want you to be a part of this. And as Everell said that she stepped into that area, I feel like the, like she started to illuminate that darkness, that she started to um, pour in the light you know, and to create form and to create the reality that's in the destiny that's inside of her that that was being released. And it, it was like the joy of the father was there just excited as she was partnering with him, you know, and, but I've also, I've had this feeling like, I was like, okay, God, what are you meditating on? What are you expanding in us? And um, I felt like God said, I'm expanding your soul. I'm creating a space for your soul where you've lived in a vacuum where you haven't really had the space that I've created for you. And he's like, I'm creating a space for you, you and I want you to jump into this space and, and we're going to co-create together this space to give your soul a place where I can show it the love that I want to show your soul. And I just felt like there's just an expansion of his love and his goodness. I even felt like there was a point that his focus was on us and he wanted to show us that we were his first love, you know, and that, that we were his heart's desire, that he passionately and jealously loved us. And I mean, I just felt like this, this space was opening up and like he was showing us something that, that we couldn't see. Um, before like he was saying i'm expanding you. i'm allowing you to see deeper into my heart toward you but then there was also this encounter like bucky said like it was the earth and there was like it didn't have any form and there was like the darkness that was over it it was a like he was allowing us to go into that and even in the earth he was creating a space for us and we were partnering with him and just releasing light and and releasing hope and we were co-creating and and we were we were partnering with his mind and um and i just felt so like this is something big that we're we're engaging with god but there's this reality also that god is revealing to us his heart to us his passionate love you know, sort of that, that reality that we are the beloved and we're also choosing not to love the world, but we're choosing to love him. We're choosing that reality that we're loving him. And um, there's, there's something in that we're, we're stepping into an intimate place in God, uh, this, this space that he's creating for us. And um, I don't know, I'm just getting a lot with that right now. Yeah. That's really beautiful. Okay, so when he when he when he spoke into the into darkness and he said, "Let there be light," he released the light beams into the into the earthly realm. And then it was days later when he said, "Let me make man in my own man in my own image." So he, he literally had released us into the beginning to create up to that moment that we were created as man, not as you know, we went from light beings to, to man. That's what I saw when you were sharing that, right? We put That's on good. the earth. We put on the earth suit. Yeah. We were actually there creating at the same time. Uh-huh. Because we were in him. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. We were that light that he spoke into the earth. And he spoke it in, and that's what he was watching. But we were watching with him, and yet we were it. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh. <Woo. laughs> I'm getting a sense of like drunkenness of his love on me right now. And just, 
it's deep. It's deep, and it's not just for me. It's something I'm supposed to release into the earth. Mm-hmm. That's good. Right. Yeah, I'm sensing, like, um, oh, I don't even know how to say that. It's like, ah, uh, give me a few moments to just put it into words. Anybody else can carry on while I think about it. <laughs> I totally know what you mean, Avril. <laughs> well spoken. <laughs> I said it all with nothing. <laughs> yes, that's it. Okay, I think the word that I'm looking for is, is just, <coughs> is the intimacy of it, that, that he's revealed, like, look, like I, no, I haven't got it yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's all inside out and outside in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, um, I've gone back to look at the song. And I'm seeing far below the ship. So like we're in him. The world is mourning. And of course, we know what's going on in the world at the minute. They don't realize he's alive. No one understands, but Major Tom sees. Now the life commands. This is my home. I'm coming home. Wow. I never knew those lyrics were in that song. <laughs> Earth below us, drifting, falling, floating weightlessly, coming home. Earth below us, drifting, falling, weight, um, floating weightlessly, coming home. And that was said three times. Coming home, home. I just love how this ties in with what Robert said, where he was in the parking lot and he saw that like God orchestrated the whole thing. And it's just, I'm just thinking when this song was written, I think in the late 60s by David Bowie. And, you know, God, God put that song in him. And here we mm -hmm. are, what, some 50 years later, whatever. Decoding it. <laughs> Decoding it. And, and, and yeah, it's just awesome. The structure of it all, the, the, the vastness is just awesome. So, Father, we release your comfort upon the world. We release your light upon the world. We release your goodness upon the world. Mm. And we release your vision upon the world. That many will see and many will hear and many will come, come home to your heart. And I would even say we release, we release the uh, the vastness of the mind of Christ Amen. to the world. Hmm. Yeah, and that they will they will realize. It says they don't realize he's alive. That they will know that they know that the you know that you. You purchased, you, you paid the price to remove the veil off people's eyes, the blindness um, down through the ages, down through the cosmos, that, um, that light will flow in, in the dark places. And, and we declare and decree that darkness will flee and that God and consciousness will arise that's within people will wake up. Yes. Wakey, wakey, rise wakey, and shine. Wakey, wakey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, rise and shine. For your light has come. We release your glory, Father. And we declare and decree that the whole earth is full of your glory. Yes. It, it thinks it's morning at the minute, but you're rejoicing. And we release the knowledge of your glory. 
and the love and the rest. Robert, did you have something too that you had, you had mentioned? Oh or... yeah, oh, I got something right now. <laughs> um, Go for it. I, I, <laughs> earlier, earlier when um, Jessica had said something about, you know, the major Tom, and then she referenced it to Thomas in the Bible. And then all of a sudden, I realized some things I've been hearing lately through some teachings. One of it's like through Kirby, Delano Rell, and, and different uh, things that he's talking about Thomas and the gospel of Thomas. And he's talking about where did Thomas go? And Thomas went, you know, even according to the Bible, he went toward like India and uh, different areas of the world to share the gospel, you know. And when he did, the areas that he went to are really considered the areas that are more prominent for the Eastern religion, you know, that have that, that, that reality of, of even meditation, you know, anything, you know, all these different things. And the Western religion really hated that part. And they, they sort of condemned that part and they, they didn't even want that. Even the, you know, the gospel of Thomas was removed from all the other, you know, thing. And there was like, like it was, he had something that the enemy did not want to release, you know, or did not want the world to know, you know. And as we're sitting here, you know, engaging and all this stuff and you're doing all this stuff and talking about Major Tom and all that kind of stuff, I just kind of had read in Romans 12 and I, I didn't read the first part, but it says, since we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses, you know, and then it goes into that scripture. And then God said, look into the realm right now at the cloud of witnesses. And all of a sudden I saw St. Thomas with us. And I can sense this reality that he knew something. He released something in his, you know, what God had shown has showed him that's being released. And and I and even Kirby's talking about it. He said that he really believes that um, that uh, Saint Thomas had a reality of the mind of Christ. He had a he had a great huge reality of the mind of Christ and he also had a reality what it really meant to allow God to meditate inside of us you know and and to be this meditation and um and we've been talking about this and uh I am starting to see that that even that song brought this total reality and it's just amazing how it's all coming together right now and um there's something being released like a cutting edge thing you know and there's something with this with the you know uh saint thomas right now and and where he had released the things that he released but there was such persecution that came against what what he had released um especially from the western church and uh but uh I don't know. I'm just seeing it all linked together right now. And it's just causing my spirit to just explode with this reality of what God's doing. I just want to confirm about, about um, Thomas. The, um, when we were still in like the control room before we entered into the cosmos, I was very aware of, of someone behind us like a general i was going to use the word general there was like somebody who knew that that what they were doing in the control tower and and was behind us like teaching us or showing us or just helping us do what we do and and i think that's i think also think that was thomas and and just personally um i can't remember if it was on here or where i don't think it was on here but I did something where we were asked, where we asked a mentor to come help us from the cloud of witnesses. And um, 
and I got the name Thomas, that Thomas was helping me. And I just thought that was funny because I'm a bit of a doubter. So I thought, okay, no wonder Thomas wow. is coming to help me. So um, I totally wow. resonate with what you said because I did feel his presence earlier on. Wow. You know, often I, Av Avril, um, the, the, I call, um, and I've been taught, you know, over the years that the people from the cloud of witnesses that um, come to us to uh, help us um, with things in our life, right? And, uh, and more often than not, they are things that they struggled with in their life, right? Yeah. And yeah. Um, some people call them their men in white linen. Like Thomas is, I would say, he's one of your men in white linen. Yeah. Um, he struck, you know, he struggled with doubting. You say, you know, you tend yeah. to. Yeah, so I would encourage you to spend, you know, spend some good time with him and get to know him. Yeah, thank you for reminding me. Thank you for that. Yeah. I too, since Thomas earlier, I was thrown back to that um, scene in scripture where Thomas got an invitation from Yeshua and it was a private invitation to put his hands in his side. And that is the place where we're all birthed yeah. from. Yeah, and, I was going to um, say the same thing. And I, I saw that really clearly. And um, Thomas kind of stood back and he said, he, 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 um, he said, my Lord and my God. And I think he entered that place. I think he was the only one of the disciples that actually entered back in where the flesh was torn. Wow, this That's is really deep, good. Guys. Yes. So that was where we were all birthed from above, was through the water and the and the blood from his side. Yeah, amen. And Thomas doubted, but Yeshua gave him the invitation to enter in. And he asked, Thomas asked, help my unbelief. And then he believed and um, he said, my Lord and my God. Mandy, will you share what you just wrote? Oh, wait a minute. Did somebody, did I miss something here? Is there something so on this? Yeah. Someone had referenced oh, the wrote, song. Someone, someone referenced the song come from like 1960 or something. I heard the number 60 brought up, whether it was 60 years ago or 1960. And in essence, the Lord has been talking to me about numbers. And six is man. And 10 is the perfection and completion or, or a completedness in God's time. So could this not be the perfected time of God for man to pull man into the state of where we don't doubt anymore, there, there's no, there's the perfection of the complete list of the, the unbelief that it's not that we so so the maturing of the sun shall be. I think um, I mean that's <laughs> that's a really good question. Be and it, it, especially because that was kind of like the one of the topics that we were discussing before the meeting. Yeah, so it looks like it, it looks like not only have we been hitting it on the head, but I think all this is going about because this is a an appointed a, a, a time or season by God into the perfection of this. Thank you, Father. And it's within man. So question. As we receive this and we're getting this understanding, shall we not share it out so that the revelation, even if it's without man's knowledge, that they would be able to receive it within the heart? Because I, I, I think that's what causes a lot of the doubt is because of our mind. We have to see everything with our mind. 
So is there not a way to share with what we're receiving or what we're getting? The the um, it's really about heart and love. It's really about trusting God. Do we really? Um, but is there not a way to share it that we could share? Well, you, you first. I think if I understand you right, you can um, just release it right here in this engagement. So Declare, so when we're yeah. positioned. So when we're positioned up, even above where I was, okay, so I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, as we release this revelation and this knowledge, this intimacy and this trust with you unto all or unto the earth. I mean, I don't. And we release this, 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 uh, this realm. Mm -hmm. We open it up. We open it up from within, I would say at this point, within the one nation of, of Christ. Yeah. We release this appointed time, Father. Yes, thank you, Father. To all who are willing to receive it. Thank you, Lord. Is that is that what you meant, Mandy? Like that, or is was there more to? No, nope. you hit it on the head. Okay. I would say since the before the three days of fasting before Day of Atonement, even since um, Rosh Hashanah, and I've been really repenting and for for deception and you know, aligning with the lie and for actually the lack of just. And the truth is, I have not trusted God. I've trusted my own self or listened to a lie instead of just trusting him. And uh, a lot of it is maybe things that were taught or whatever, but that's just what I've been re really repenting on. And for all this today, it's just kind of bringing me into a circle of, wow. <laughs> <Don't listen to laughs> me. <laughs> I mean, I might have been the one repenting, but everybody's getting kind of the same thing with the unbelief and stuff. So I was just like, wow. Does anybody have every, anything else? What do you think we we done? We feel complete. I I just felt like I wanted to stress this, um, and I heard Kirby talk about this, and this has really kind of been really affecting me deeply. You know, just in the the statement, it's so simple, but it's very profound. He said that we. In the church, we'll say things like, I want the mind of Jesus. I want the mind of Jesus. And, and you know, he said, you have to read what it actually said. It doesn't really say the mind of Jesus. It says the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay. It does, it does have the similarity of, of being related to that. But he said there was something specific when he said the mind of Christ. And so when he started to do like a study on the word Christ, he said, it really is where Jesus is proclaiming, I'm like God, you know, or I am God and uh, the, his deity. And he, and there's a stress of the anointed one, but it also has a depth of meaning saying, I am that I am. So, you know, when he's, when he started talking about it, he said, you're not just saying just from the human part saying, you know, I just have the mind of Jesus, you know, like the, the humanity of, of God, you know, it's saying, no, I have the mind of I am that I am. And he said, it's limitless. It's expanding. It's huge. It's, it's like vast and bigger than who you are in your your reality and and he said you're stepping into that mind you're stepping into the mind of i am that i am you know and i just felt like um that that was just something that god was just wanting me to express when we talk about the mind of christ 
Amen. That's awesome. That's, yeah, that's really good. Oh, look at all. Jessica, you've been sharing a bunch of um, scriptures here, too, on our chat. Thank you. Yeah, I just now references. see them. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that uh, I so value what you just shared. You know, um, I, I knew, <clears throat> you know, I, one of the things that I think I shared with you guys when Gil, you know, from Kingdom Talks came to Polly's house and I went and met them and stuff. One of the things that he was reading some book and it all, it talked about uh, the Christ anointing and that's what we all have, you know, right. and it's like, it just, just, it just kind of, at the time I was like, it, it, something that I had just discovered in my studies years ago, you know, that it was like, yeah, the Christ part of Jesus is the part that's the Holy Spirit. That's the anointing. That's the part that he sends back. You know, Jesus is the man, but the, the part that made him powerful, like God was the spirit of God. And, and that was the Christ that was the anointed one, but to see it as the, I am that I am it puts it at a whole nother level. It really, to me, that's like that union. It's that mirror that we've been talking about. Yeah. You know, um, so that just, it just for some reason takes it even deeper for me. Yeah. And I think it is hard. I mean, you know, I'm just being real. I, I was even talking about it today that, that struggle that not seeing, you know, I'm not that person that walks up to somebody and, and lays hands on them and they get healed. I, I, if he's done it, he's done it without my knowledge. It's, you know, I, I mean, unfortunately it's mostly in my family. And then the Lord said, well, you know, and even something on the radio or something, it was like, you know, G oh, it was, it was, uh, what's his name? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, but it, David Herzog, you know, he said, even Jesus had a hard time in his own hometown. And I think of my hometown is like my home, yeah. my kids and my husband, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, yeah. you know, like, yeah, yeah. I've been, yeah, mocked and like, you know, I was trying to step out and all of that faith. And it was, it, it was really shut down here in my house, you know? Yeah. So um, I found so much comfort when I would be out with ministry with women or leading women in ministry, because that's where I got to really flourish and, and not hold back and seek the manifestations of God, you know, but here I haven't been able to do that for about four years. So I'm back to just in my home. And a lot of that has been so discouraging for me because when my kids get sick, I still lay hands and I pray for them, I even anoint them with oil, but it's not like, Oh, you know, cause you're talking about the glory being past the anointing. You know, the glory is that, you know, is just, uh, you don't even have to touch somebody. It's when the glory comes, it's God's power. You know, it, it defies our, our faith. It defies our logic, it defies everything, but the anointing you can partner with in your humanity and, and the giftings and all that. So that's just at that point, what I've heard, but just taking that anointing in Christ and the anointed one in me that I'm one with to that level of, I am that I am and mirroring that with him, it just really reminds me because it has been a discouragement for me that I, I'm not actively um, seeing that. Like I, I envy that. It's like, I see people that now it's like old hat. Oh yeah. I can, you know, I've seen miracles. I've seen this, I've seen that. And it's like, wow, Lord, I, I've desired that for so many years. And still I feel I'm continuously yearning to see the manifestation of God because one of my favorite scriptures is, is when Paul was talking and he's like, I don't come to you with human wisdom. I don't come to you with eloquent words. I come to you with a demonstration of the power of God, you know? And, and so I just put all that with that, you know, having the mind of Christ and the I am within. So it That's just good. really restores my hope in that area, I guess. Yes. Um, to not lose hope and be discouraged exactly um, but to believe you know yeah yeah so should we close avril yeah i'm good if everybody else is feels feels we ready to close yeah good night mandy love you love you mandy good night yeah i'm good to go close too
Okay, so thank you, Lord. We just seal this ascension in your precious blood, Lord. And we just we thank you for the honor and privilege of, of what you have showed us tonight. And um, Holy Spirit, we pray that you would quicken our spirits to retain this and to remember, because sometimes we forget. So we ask that, that this would linger with us yes. and that we would remember, Lord. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.